So a row erupted in the House of Commons recently over an MP's decision to remove the T from the LGBT. The Alba Party's Westminster leader, Neil Hanvey, had been praising Conservative Alicia Kearns for making a really important point about members of the community feeling safe. But then he dropped the T from the initialism. So let's have a listen to the reaction from Alicia Kearns that followed. He's absolutely right. But there was one, one digit messaging from his LGB, LGBT. We do not divide the LGBT community in this place. You can say that you have concerns about what we're doing, but by removing the T, you are suggesting that transgender people do not exist. You are suggesting they are lesser than other LGB people. And I will not stand for that because it was trans people who stood with people at Stonewall. It was trans people who fought alongside for LGB rights. So when you say LGBT, you suggest when you remove the T, you suggest that they are lesser. And I will happily discuss with you the intricacies of legislation. But when you choose to eradicate them, that is wrong. Now, unfortunately, despite multiple attempts for Alicia Kearns to appear or provide a statement, we've been unable to get her on, but the invitation is open. But anyway, to discuss this, I'm joined by the lawyer and director of the Gay Men's Network, Dennis Kavanagh. Welcome to the show. Dennis, let's start with Alicia Kearns' speech there. Uh, what did you make of it? Um, it was absurd. It was offensive. It was unwarranted. It was unparliamentary behaviour. She should have apologised for it. And just so the record's absolutely clear, what Neil Hanvey MP was saying was simply that the conversion legislation can unintentionally sometimes do damage both to LGB and to trans people separately. That's yes. all he was saying. Yes. So this reaction from a heterosexual woman bellowing at him across the chamber about there's no LGB without the T was completely unwarranted. It's also wholly ignorant of gay history for her to stand up in the comments and say they were there in Stonewall. No, they weren't, if she's referring to the Stonewall riots. And as we pointed out in a press statement on the matter, those riots are in America anyway, and they post-date the decriminalisation of homosexuality in this country by some years. Really, Parliament has to do a lot better than people just repeating stuff they read on Twitter, such as no LGB without the T. Well, as I say, I did invite Alicia Kearns onto the show. I, I do hope that she'll come on and face some questions about this. It looks like at the moment, from the, the wall of silence, she's reluctant to do so. But it's really important, isn't it? Because she's a Conservative MP. The, the official Conservative policy is to be pro what they call trans, a, a ban on trans conversion therapy. Can you explain why that's a problem? Well, what's happening at the moment is this. Uh, Melissa Kearns is proposing an amendment to the Criminal Justice Bill. It's called NC90. And it's a cobbled together Frankenstein's monster piece of legislation that keeps changing and changing. We're now on version four. And we at Gay Men's Network have just produced a briefing on it. It is a dangerous and homophobic piece of legislation because what it says is if you quote, change, negate or replace, doesn't bother to define those terms, um, any transgender identity, then you are guilty of a serious criminal offence. Now, that would include, as I say, sometimes people with good intentions make errors here. Do you imagine a parent with a highly autistic um, girl, say she's got an eating disorder, say she's suffering from depression, say one day she comes downstairs and says, Mum, Dad, I'm really a boy, I want to wear a breast binder now. And say her mother says, I don't want you wearing a breast binder, that could hurt you. Well, bad luck, Mother, you've just changed a gender identity or transgender identity under the definition of this badly written piece of legislation. And that's for this reason. And the definition of transgender identity in this says if you propose to do something, you have the identity. So the child proposing to be a boy by wearing the binder, um, th they have that identity. So this, this appalling amendment has the risk of criminalising parents and, and worse yet, it has, a, it has the capacity to drive a coach and horses through Hilary Cass's changes to, ge to gender medicine. Now, Hilary Cass, in her recent review, which of course has been groundbreaking and very, very important, uh, specifically mentioned this misunderstanding yeah. about conversion therapy. Uh, do you want to tell us a bit about that? Yeah, uh, what Hillary Cass said, quite, quite rightly, looking at what these politicians are doing, and no doubt worried about the amateur hour amendments that are being produced by low information MPs, said, look, exploratory therapy with a child who has cross-sex ideation 
And you've got to remember these kids are in a state of high distress. They're not just wandering into the Tavistock for a laugh. These are very, very vulnerable children. She said, doctors trying to help children like that, it's harmful to call what they are doing conversion therapy. And Alicia's amendment does exactly this. Yeah, well, a lot of doctors have expressed concern, and paediatric doctors in particular who specialise in gender care, because they're saying that if they explore any other possible avenues, why this child might think they're in the wrong body, maybe they're suffering from internalised homophobia, uh, maybe they're autistic, maybe they've been abused, etc., that even to broach that would risk the doctors being criminalised, or at least that is the perception from certain members of the, the, of the medical uh, pract um, job. Well, that, that's absolutely right. And, and look, the legislation is tipped one way, right? Because you only get prosecuted if you change, replace or negate the identity. Yes. If you just affirm it, if you just go along with it, you can't be prosecuted. So if you want an easy life as a doctor, or heaven forbid, as a parent, you do nothing. You accept the self-diagnosis of the child, you do what the child wants. That's that could be disastrous. Hilary Cass spoke to the Scottish Parliament this week. She said she spoke, uh, or she spoke about a case about a young man who was given puberty blockers very early. He's now living cross-sex full-time as, as a woman, as a trans woman. He said to her, look, I was gay. I just realise now I, I was gay and I can't go backwards. I can't have my life back. And that is how serious this is. That is a young gay man who has had his life growing up as a gay man taken from him by idiots who are pushing an ideological approach to um, legislation and an ideological approach to medicine. And this problem would be made even worse if something like this absurd Kearns Amendment passed because the doctors would be forced to give him puberty blockers, forced to give him cross-sex hormones, and if they didn't, they would be prosecuted. So where is this coming from? I mean, the language that you mentioned there I don't recognise from any other legislation. Is this just been invented by Kearns? Well, it, it seems to be a total Frankenstein's monster. We had a private member's bill by Lloyd Russell Moyle, and this bears a close resemblance to it. There's then been four different haphazard, crazy changes to this amendment. The first one didn't even have a definition of transgender identity. The second one allowed for a post office style private prosecution. This final one, you're not going to believe this, explicitly for the first time says you can be prosecuted for private prayer. I'm not making that up. It, it, it's specifically contemplates a private prayer. If you, if you do it, if you pray with the intention of changing someone's sexual orientation or transgender identity, you can commit a criminal offence. That, that offense. can't be real. I'm afraid that it is real. It's in black and white on the face of the statute. It is very difficult at the moment for any of us to take this seriously. It, as you know, we at Gay Men's Network have published a briefing on this um, at the moment, and we are struggling to take that seriously. It, it, you know what, in fairness to Alicia, it has to be an amateurish mistake by her. Uh, but if this goes into legislation, she will criminalise private prayer. But I don't understand it. Can it be the case that she hasn't read the Cass Review? Well, you do wonder sometimes, don't you? Because anyone reading the Cass Review knows that something has gone seriously wrong in paediatric medicine. So the idea that in the middle of something that's in a state of flux, that desperately needs reform, that's been shown to be hugely harmful, you stick the, you know, the size nine boot of a criminal statute, uh, variously putting doctors, and as we know, wider than that, counsellors, therapists, um, nurses, you name it, under threat of prosecution. It does rather seem that if she hasn't read the Cass Review, this is drafted in complete ignorance of what Hillary Cass says. And, and th this can't happen. This is the next generation of gay people. And we in the gay rights movement are not going to have them um, suffering regret. We're not going to have them treated like this. We're not going to have politicians, as we saw in that clip with Neil Hanvey, talking over and for gay men and for lesbians when we say, look, we've got reasonable concerns about you trying to regulate paediatric medicine. Dennis Kavanagh, there's a lot to digest there. I'm sure we'll have you back on because this isn't going anywhere. No. Dennis Kavanagh, thanks very much.